Hello, Crystal Palace. Welcome to the Upper Norwood Library Hub's Library Live Lunch. This is a place to share positive stories, useful local information, find out about the community in more depth and uh, help keep us all connected during this time. So my guest today is Marty Jessup, who is a local artist and runs life drawing classes through the Library Hub under normal circumstances. So Marty, it's lovely to have you today. Thanks so much Thank for joining much. me. Thank you Tell us a bit about your background and uh, why did you become an artist? Oh, loaded question, big question. <laughs> um, I've always been an artist, actually, and I, since I was very young, um, I've always drawn and sketched. Um, I'm adopted, and my parents were not creative at all. They were both working class, and well, they're quite creative in their own way, but um, definitely didn't do any any drawings or paintings. And um, they noticed very early on that I was just scrawling over everything and it could keep me quiet. So that encouragement <laughs> happened quite a lot. Um, so consequently, bills would come in, newspaper, I started drawing on the walls. Um, so they thought, ah, oh, he's, he's, he can draw a bit. And then when I was at school, very early on at school, I was just gifted with some really interesting people that were really, really helpful. Um, uh, in my first school, there was a teacher um, called Mrs. Essenberg, and I always remember her. She was a larger-than-life um, figure. She used to wear clogs. All, she wore every colour imaginable. Mm -hmm. And um, she was just full of fun. And she made drawing and doodling and, and different ways of mark making really interesting. And I was never very, very sort of um, uh, academic. You know, I, I quite like English, but I wasn't very good at writing. I liked history because I could draw things like <laughs> Roman soldiers and things like that. But I, academic wise, I, I wasn't wasn't great. I'd listen, but I just wouldn't really take it all in. With art, I always did it a lot. And um, and then I entered school competitions and I, I won a school competition three years running. And they stopped me from doing it. So they actually told me once, said, please don't enter this. Oh, no. <laughs> there was another chance. And I said, but the whole point, even at a young age, I remember thinking, the whole point is to, to enter. They're going, yeah, well, you, you've done it. You've done it a few times now. So, so, so I did. And um, But I, I had various people. I had um, uh, Mrs. Vernon. So I, I had extra evening classes. And I remember my mum gave me a set of pencils and she'd, actually made a little pencil case for me. I very vividly remember that. Uh, Mrs. Vernon was a very, very quiet um, lady who um, just, got, I think she, one stage she got a pot plant and it, and it had tiny little hairs on the leaves. And I did this drawing and it was so detailed, she, she couldn't believe it. And she was saying, well, you've done the little hairs on the leaves. And I said, well, yeah, they're there. If I see them, I draw them, you know. And, wow. And yeah, and then there are various other, other art teachers, Mr. Del Tufo, who I recently got in contact with, um, who lives in Kent, um, who I thought was coming on being a, an art teacher. He literally stopped teaching art about a year after, after art. he had me in his class. 
I was probably about 11 or 12. Um, and uh, yeah, I had this romantic notion that he was going to be sort of, you know, still doing art or maybe, you know, well known and completely stopped doing art, stopped doing art. And then finally, Mrs. Bedford, who was my history of art teacher, who was very down to earth, again, very funny, said plainly, I can't teach you any more than what you've, you already know. It's already in you, but I can, but history of art, I can tell you about artists and, and that just, I came alive wow. even more because, you know, you only learn, you learn by, we well, never stop learning, yeah. but you also learn by the way other artists work and how they've sort of um, perceived things and draw things. So, mm. so wow. that's, that's, that's kind of like from a schooling. Yeah, well, you were very lucky to have parents and teachers who spotted that and really nurtured it by the sound of it. Definitely, and I think that's so helpful, and that that feeds back to me because I, in recent times, I've I've I do one to one painting sessions in my studio, so people pay for me for a day. I buy the materials, and so far I've done that five times, um, four with a uh, no three acrylic to show people I do acrylic paintings one for watercolour and one recently for oil paint, which was quite um, uh, new, uh, really interesting. Um, before that, I actually, I think about two years ago, one of the, um, one of the schools, Harris Academy schools, um, art teacher came to my studio. I, I opened my studio on Haynes Lane sometimes mm -hmm. and, and um, this chap started talking and he said, oh, I'm, I'm a teacher at, uh, at Harris Academy school. Would you consider popping in and giving a giving a chat about your work? So I did, and then from that he then said, "Look, I've got a, a young lady called Sharon, and she's a very very keen artist. She's only sixteen. Uh, could you have her as an intern?" And I flatly said no, first of all, because I was like, "Well, <laughs> interns like when I've known and when I've worked in other companies have have ended up making a tea and being basically mm. slaves, and I didn't want that. And also, I I." I didn't want to waste anyone's time. Well, I thought about it and thought about Mrs. Essenberg, um, you know, Mrs. Vernon, Mrs. Del Tufo, and all the people that have supported me. And I literally did a U-turn and said the next day, yep, bring her in. But if I have her, I'm going to have her, and they, they said for two weeks, I said, I'm going to structure something. I'm not going to do anything by halves. I'm going to break down a way of, of teaching her. And when I had her in, I, I showed her how to do portraiture. I got her to paint me. I took her outside in, in Crystal Palace Park and we painted in the park. I took her to the V&A. She didn't even know what the Victoria and Albert Museum was. And I gave her, I sat with her and we drew together. We copied a, a sculpture mm -hmm. and we had a lot of people watching us and she wasn't, I mean, I'm not bothered about people watching me drawing, but, but as a young lady, she'd never had that before. And she was, she was great. Mm -hmm. um, and after two weeks, she had a body of work that then when she took back to show a teacher, the teacher couldn't believe it. And, mm. and I don't, I wasn't paid anything of that, but what I really liked was, was helping someone out. Mm. You know, I didn't think I could kind of teach that way. It's just something I do when you do say yeah. automatically, it, it's quite hard to sort of think, well, how, do, how actually do I do that? Yeah. Um, so that, that's that. And of course, the other thing that I have been doing is um, the Making a Mark life drawing class in the library, you know, in the Up and Award Library, because through um, uh, through uh, Emily and Chris, um, uh, both both of these people in the library have, have really supported me. Uh, Emily Jill especially, because um, uh, she sort of came to me and said, you know, would you would you be thinking, of, you know, could you do a life drawing class? And so there's about, I think almost three years ago, and it was in the basement of the library, and a um, small room, and you could ba barely get um, the model and like maybe eight people in. Wow. Which was quite, well, it's quite intimidating when you've got a naked person, and then someone that's <laughs> never done any drawing before, whether they're a man or a woman, and they're about five foot away from someone, never done any drawing in a confined mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. um, but, but somehow we managed to do it okay and, and uh, built up more people. And, and now I do it upstairs or have, you know, in the mm -hmm. past been doing it upstairs. And, um, and that's a weekly drop in um, all ages. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and people can come, come to that. So, and again, the love I get from it is the feedback I get from people that just to join up, 
to try something new. Mm -hmm. And it might be outwardly someone that's very confident in themselves, but they've never done this before. So I kind of walk them through it slowly and have a bit of a laugh. I, I play a bit of quiet music in the background. I, I have tea break, tea, tea and coffee, break and biscuits for about- Very 10, important. <laughs> which is 10, 15 minutes for a break. And um, I've made some lovely friends. And, and in Crystal Palace, you can't throw, you can't kick a football down West O Street without it bouncing off a painter, a photographer, um, a singer, a sculptor, you know, it's a very creative area and Definitely. and that's what I like. So yeah, the teaching side of it Amazing. really helps me. And then, and then, yeah, finally, I guess a college, I went to college um, when I could eventually afford to for, with my, um, you know, my background, I guess it is, um, was fine art, but I, I went to, I found Camberwell College was going to be the one for me. I, I actually thought St. Martin's maybe it was the only one I'd ever heard of. Um, but then I moved, I was uh, not, well, I was in Lewisham, so I wasn't far from Peckham, and actually Camberwell College is in Peckham, and a few people said, oh, Camberwell's really good, their foundation is very good, and there was a chap called Clive Garland, who's a bit of a hippie, only a few years older than me, but, um, but one of the tutors, and he was, he was quite good, um, and uh, Jim, who ran it, I can't remember his last name, he ran the class, uh, when the school and um, so that was foundation. So you do it. You did everything. And they that's to get your portfolio together for your degree, mm -hmm. and um, that was that was really good. That was intense nine months. But at the end of it, luckily they came to the conclusion that I was a fine artist, and that's the area I should should go to. And then I prepared prepared to go to do my degree, which I did in Farnham, which was just well maybe forty five minutes out from London, easy mm. for me to get back, back in and, um, you know, to go to exhibitions and see friends and go down to Kent to my mum and dad. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Farnham was really good, but it was called Farnham College of Art. And then they changed it to, um, oh, it had so many different names. It was called the Surrey Institute of Art and Design, West CAD, the West Surrey College of Art and Design, and now <laughs> it's the University, University College of Art. So I could say I went to university college, but it wasn't a university when I went. So that's when I did my degree. And, and that's my traditional side of, yeah. of things. Well, I think you should, in a sec, um, talk us through some of the pictures that we've okay. got to show. Just before we do that, um, I just want to say hello to everybody who's watching. Um, so we're on three different social media platforms today. And um, we've got Emily, Jean-Francois, Justin, Samantha, Emma, Bedby, Helen, Nick and Alan that I can see who've joined us on various social media platforms. So thank you guys. Welcome. Uh, it's lovely to have you watching. <laughs> if you have any questions for Marty, uh, please do drop them in the comments of whichever platform you're on and we will try and answer them as we go. Definitely. So, um, so Marty, tell us a bit about some of the portraits. Um, there's a couple of actors for a start, aren't there? Yes, yeah, I've gone through a bit of a phase of, <laughs> I don't know what, painted actors. And um, it all began because early on in the year before, before COVID, when, when people were out and about, um, one of my most uh, all-time favourite um, actors, Kirk Douglas, passed away. Um, and uh, I thought I'd do a painting. And I, ha I had a big old canvas, which is five foot by four foot so not small and I decided in my infinite wisdom to, to have a go at a painting so I found I saw loads of pictures and did a very very big painting of Kirk Douglas which is in my studio as my partner Tamsin pointed out it's it's good I like it it looks like him but it's big and I said it's quite niche I mean you've got to be a, a Kirk Douglas fan and you've got to have the space on your wall to if you want to buy it um, but yes, yeah, so I started doing that. And then um, I guess really, because I'm, I'm interested in faces and people and I've, I have stopped people in the underground and on trains and in the street and I've handed out my cards and you get 50-50. You get some people that just think you're nuts and other people that check out your work and then uh, it goes on to the next stage and then you might get a commission or, or just, you know, be able to get a free model really, you know, and, and someone to see how you work. 
so that was good. Um, and then, um, yeah, well, I've done a couple. So uh, I did a small one a little while ago, Vincent Cassell, the, the, um, the actor, the French actor. And I like him because he's just got one of these faces where there's a lot more going on inside his head and you can see it in his, in, in his eyes. And it looks a, like he's had a lot of experience, doesn't definitely, he? There's definitely, yeah. he, He's, um, well, as a portrait painter, I, I look, and as anyone does, anyone, when you have a conversation, you look into someone's eyes. And I always say that if you're gonna be, a, if you're gonna do portraiture, it's not only the fact that you do a, li a lifelike, you know, get, their, get what they look like, um, you know, make sure that they look like how they look, but you're trying to get something about them, an essence about them, the life that's in them. And it, the way I say it is, if you look at a photograph, that's a snapshot second of someone's life. And I'm no, no way am I a photographer, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm giving it a go and I'm not very good. I've had friends that are photographers. Um, my friend Cohen, who's a very good photographer, um, a local lady, she's, she's brilliant. I love her work. Um, you know, you have a kind of skill to these things, and, and, um, but it's a second, it's a moment captured in life and it's brilliant. What I'm trying to do is I'm capturing moments. Uh, it's a long period of time. I'm staring either at you in my studio or I'm looking at loads of source materials and photos and getting to know, like facial mapping you, you know, seeing, seeing what I can bring out. And, and or everyone has a certain, certain look or glint or a fleeting moment. It helps if I know, know them, um, if I know the person, although I actually can be a bit of a hindrance. I mean, I've painted my partner Tanzin twice now, and um, the amount of pressure, because, yeah. you know, when you, love, when you love someone and you think, right, this has got to be the best painting I've ever done, and you, you kind of completely focus all your energies. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, Vincent Cassell is one of these people where I think, yeah, you've definitely got a lot more going on. And he's a fantastic actor as well, I think. So mm. bit of a bit of an easy one. Although one quick thing about that is what I finished it and then I went to try and send it to him through Instagram. And on Instagram that very same day, he'd had an accident on his scooter and he'd fallen off his scooter and he was oh. in hospital. So I thought, oh, uh, oh, bad, bad timing. Maybe he needs to maybe he needs a painting. I don't know. <laughs> that might have been a really good confidence boost. You, you never know. Yeah. You never know. It's like, oh no, I hope it wasn't me somehow. You know. Yeah. Um, so that was that. And then quite so recently. Just sorry. before you tell us about this one, sorry to interrupt oh. you, um, which I hope is going to be the other famous actor that we have a picture of to show oh, yeah. people. Yeah. Um, but just before you do, I have a couple of comments for you. Sure. So Emily Jewell says, nice to see you, Marty. Oh, um, thank you, Emily. And Andy says, can't wait for life drawing to start again. His Wednesdays haven't been the same. Now, Andy, don't go away because um, I think we're going to come back to that about uh, the classes yes. in a bit. Yes. So, um, so tell us about the other famous actor picture that we're going to show people. Well, again, it's one of those things where um, if you can find pictures, so I, I'm on the computer quite a lot. So my, my, my other hand of creativity, if you like, is um, I'm a traditional artist, so I paint, draw um, and sketch, but I'm also a digital artist. So I do illustration and cartoon work and, and various things like that, uh, which I've done um, in the past. I worked for a marketing agency. I've done stuff for Saatchi and Saatchi years ago. Um, uh, Time Out magazine, I used to do a weekly cartoon, which was a painted cartoon. I, um, that was really, really interesting. Um, so I've, I've done that kind of side. Well, I was looking on the computer and I found a really good picture of um, Peter O'Toole, the actor Peter O'Toole. And it had an age about it because he was someone that was an incredible speaker when you hear him. I mean, he was an actor, but he had a great voice. Um, uh, being in some fantastic films, Lance of Arabia being one of them. And uh, I thought, yeah, this is interesting. He was smoking and he had a cigarette holder and he's like looking over his shoulder and he's, he's got this look, which is a cross between indolence, like looking down your nose and curiosity. Um, he was quite a drinker, so he may well have been quite drunk as well. <laughs> I don't know, but he's in his fifties. And I thought, oh, that's, a, that's quite a good picture. And it haunted me for a little while for a few days. And I thought, oh, I'll see if I'm finding a better resolution. I found a really good copy and I started to do some sketching and but then I very quickly start painting. Um, mm -hmm. 
So that's the Peter O'Toole painting, and, and um, that's an oil painting that's on our panel. Sometimes I paint on, on canvas, um, stretch canvas, often um, I do that. Um, sometimes I've got a few little commissions that I'm painting on artboard. It's cheaper, but it's just, just as good, and I can be quite accurate when I do my drawing on it. Mm -hmm. um, and these are in oils, I prefer, you know, I want to eventually be a portrait artist, so I actually do portraiture full time. And okay. when friends and family know, know that's what I want to do. Um, but I'm a bit of a hidden secret. Uh, locals, people in Crystal Palace know me and, and that's nice and I get the odd bit of work, but really I've never had a gallery or anyone sort of come in and go, whoa, you're the next big thing. Because <laughs> I think that, you know, that if that happens, then, well, you know, great, all great. It's, it's the work, it's doing the work that I like. And, and actually speaking of that, um, there's a lovely uh, portrait of an NHS um, nurse, isn't there, that we need to talk yeah. about? Yes, she was lovely, uh, or is lovely. Um, so I, so yeah, it's basically called um, Portraits for NHS Hero Heroes. So Portraits for NHS Heroes is run by um, a very talented artist called Tom Croft. I hadn't heard of him before, but I got to know of him through um, another very talented artist called Nick Richards, who um, is an incredible portrait painter, and I've met him a couple of times, and he's a lovely, lovely, lovely man, but very, very skilled. And um, I think he took part in it, and I looked at it and I thought, wow, what's the premise of this? This looks good. And so if you're an artist, whether you do painting, sketching, portraiture, or whatever, what you would do is you would say, I'm an artist, I'm free if you want to paint in, if you work for the NHS, get in touch with me and I will do a free piece of artwork for you. And wow. so that was That's the idea. Lovely. And it's to give back really, it's all the people that, um, the men and women that are working in, in hospitals all throughout this time. Um, Tamsin, my fiance, she's a teacher, she's been working all the way through. So, I mean, she counts as well, you know, and you, so they're valued people, I think. And um, so, yeah, basically I put, I, I put my name up and within minutes actually on Facebook, a few people knew me said, oh, this guy Marty, he does portraiture. Yeah, um, Al, Al, why don't you do it? And this, this person called Al went, yeah, I'll probably miss the boat now. Someone else has probably come along. I've just come back from work. So I texted him, because I was on live, I said, Al, you're in, um, you're, you're the one. If you want a portrait done, I'll do it for you. Yeah. Here's links to my work. Give me a call and I'll, and I'll have a chat with you. And, um, and that, that was the, yeah, the Alice painting. And, and um, a partner took photos of her and she was very tired. She's just done two weeks, two evenings um, of, or two weeks of nights. Mm. And she had very dark shadows around her eyes. And she said, look, my partner's taken loads of photos please, please, if you do the painting, don't paint the, the dark uh, uh, um, marks under my eyes. And I said, of course, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're the, the commissioning me, I'll, whatever you want. They were very specific. So she wanted a necklace, a ring, certain things on there. And um, it was a good, great challenge. And um, uh, really, really fully enjoyed doing the painting. And, and, um, and this is a big oil painting. It's probably about 40 by 30 inches. Maybe a bit bigger than that, and um, and would not be cheap. Be quite expensive. I was going to say, yeah. What would that cost? Are we allowed to ask? But yes, yeah, so it would be about. Uh, I charge. I'm a bit like carpets, as someone pointed out. I charge by the inch. <laughs> I'm two pound an inch, right. which is an American standard. They do it obviously by dollars. But if it's twelve by fourteen inches, you go twelve times fourteen times two. That's your cost price to the painting. And then if I might add on for materials but um, which would, would maybe under quid or less on top. So for, for Alice's painting, it was just over 2000. For oh. an oil painting that size is, is fairly normal really. And she asked, and when I told her she could not believe it, I, she was shocked twice because mm. when I first showed her the painting, she didn't know what she was going to get. Well, she had an idea because she'd seen my website, but mm. I really had gone to town on it and worked, you know, really at that time actually. So this was, April, May's time, that was probably the best painting I'd ever, ever done, I'd, wow. I'd say, just because I was really, really working on it. I slowed myself down and, yeah. and I was in my studio for that length of time. Mm -hmm. so. It's brilliant. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it's an amazing picture. 
Uh, well, thank you for showing it to us. Well, and lots of artists are doing it. It's still happening now. There's going to be an exhibition. There's a um, Tom Croft is organising an online exhibition as well. And um, and so there are many, many hundreds of, of paintings and photographs and drawings of, of, of all these lovely people out there that are amazing well that's great to know that we can look out for stuff online and we actually we're sort of running out of time so we need to talk okay. about what you're doing online but just before we do that sure. i want to say hello to alan and tarzan and dennis who've joined us um so okay. if you have any questions drop them in we'll try and answer them very quickly before we finish um marty tell us about your uh your what you've been doing during lockdown because you have gone online yes uh well how to sort of kind of make a living as well it was quite a shock um, suddenly, uh, you know, from teaching life join in the library every Wednesday and having maybe 12 to 15 people on a good night, actually on a Wednesday night, mm -hmm. to have all these lovely guys and girls that are coming in, like Andy, um, uh, who, who's been coming for the last two, nearly three years, who had very little skill at, at join and then over, over um, you know, the years, it's just come on incredibly well, you know, and, and um, you know, really love his work. I made some good friends. Well, you know, I've got these people in. I have models. So I have the um, artists from, um, uh, sorry, models from the Registry of Artists Mo Models, RAM site, it's called. They're professional models. So I have about, mm, probably about 30. So half guys, half girls, all different ages. My oldest model is in her 70s. A lovely woman my youngest model is a guy about 21 22 and everything in between and all colors so um you never get the same uh, model um in two weeks in a row it always always chops and change well that's fine well you know the pandemic happens what can i do um um one lady called kate who comes to my life join uh, class who's been coming for a couple of years who's very very talented said well molly you why don't you do a zoom and Tamsin, my, my partner, she said, well, why don't you do Zoom? And everyone's mentioning Zoom. And I'm going, well, I want Zoom. I checked it out and thought, well, I'll give it a go. Um, my very good friend, Alan, um, who's in the studio next to me, a stained glass artist, um, he decided, he said, well, I asked him if he could help me. And so we did a mock trial and it worked. So basically it's a transfer of my Making a Mark Wednesday life join class online. And what I do is I send out a PowerPoint presentation um, full of loads of photographs that I've sourced. We might concentrate on doing a part of the body, like concentrate on the hands or paint, painting or joint eyes. So there'll be a small section on that. Um, there'll be short gesture poses, whereby it's just warm up poses to draw the figure. And then um, longer poses, which could be like portraiture or figure work, using various materials. So I've got links to to materials you can buy um, and I have um, loads and loads of source pictures and what happens is people can take as long as they want or as short as they want but they, I send it out on uh, when, normally a Wednesday and every Sunday at 3.30 we have a Zoom meeting where everyone shows off their work and I have um, there is 12 people so far I don't always have all 12 but most people try and do it and the feedback has been incredible. I've, I've had some, I've, I've had new people that have joined that, that weren't on my making a mark drop in class in the library. Mm -hmm. And um, so they're really enjoying it. And I've had people that have done no joins before, very little, come on to do so much in 13 weeks. So, yeah. So how can people join if they want to, if people really, watching are inspired? <laughs> if they email me, if you can add my email address. Mm -hmm, again, we will. If, if they um, just email me at Martin Jessup, M-A-R-T-I-N, J-E-S-S-U-P, 66 at gmail.com. Um, so Martin Jessup, 66 at gmail.com. I'll, I'll have a bit of a chat with you. I can send you some screen grabs of the PowerPoint presentations that I I um, send out so that's free you'll get it and it's 10 pound um, for the session so that pays for my time and for my um, you know all the all the you know put the presentations together and I mean people have paid in blocks uh, one lady oh, Marion has paid you know like a, a month's worth in advance and cool. and these are these are people from all walks of life and all ages and it's so encouraging Helen it really is. Yeah. 
That's brilliant. Well, anybody who's watching, if you're inspired to join, please do get in touch with Marty. The life drawing classes are going strong. Yes. Um, <laughs> thanks, Marty. It's been really lovely to chat to you. Um, I, I'm afraid I'm going to have to stop us there. Um, but I have uh, a couple of comments just to read you to finish off with. So um, Tamsin, who I'm assuming this is your fiance, oh, uh, um, yes. says, uh, I'm biased, but Marty's phenomenally talented. I'm oh. so proud of him. His studio in Central Crystal Palace is a treasure trove of his talent and skill. Oh. Such a lovely testimonial uh, oh thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> and um i also have alan who says very good class thumbs up um, oh, brilliant. so thank you alan yeah thanks guys thanks for all your comments and things um we're putting uh the links for marty in the comments so if you want to get in touch with him please do um we'd also love you to check out the rest of our live streaming program if you haven't already so we have the library lunch every day at midday um tomorrow is neil lebian who uh, is also known as coffee man um who serves uh, coffee and chocolates and various other amazing things at blowing dandelion and some of you may know him i've painted um, him have you? <laughs> I've done painting a blowing dandelion in it and, and he's awesome. in it. It's great. Amazing. Okay, you'll have to send me a picture of that afterwards because it's, <laughs> it's one of my favourite cafes in Crystal Palace. <laughs> um, so uh, please do please do come and watch him tomorrow. We'll try and get Marty's picture maybe for it as well. Can we add that in tomorrow? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Amazing, thanks. Cool, right. And you can see a, an extra picture of Marty's if you tune in tomorrow as well. Um, we've also got daily meditation and yoga and singing classes. Um, we have things like cross stitch with Alice um, periodically and um, running with Chris, uh, running tips. And um, what else do we have? Um, loads of things, just check it out. Um, We'd also always looking for guests for the live lunch. So if you're interested in that, please give us a shout at info at unlt.org. Um, and we've launched a new project, which is looking at the impact of um, the pandemic on our community. And we would love to hear from you for that as well. That's actually how I met Marty, um, because he filled in the survey and then had a chat with me as an interview. And now it ends up on the live lunch. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to chat to you. Um, we would love you to fill in the survey. The more people that do that, um, the more we can look at what services the Library Hub provides going forward and try to help with um, things as we come out, hopefully, of the pandemic. So um, the survey uh, is the first step to that. It's very short, four questions. It will take you less than 10 minutes. Um, please do fill it in, share it, um, just get involved. We'd really appreciate it. Um, and the link is in the the, uh, the social media feed um so that's it from me for today uh, marty so lovely to chat to you again oh, thank, you, <laughs> thank you very much my and pleasure. um hope to actually meet you in person at some point definitely come to my studio sometime i'd love to yeah i'd love to thank you i'll take you up on that brilliant um enjoy the sunshine everybody take care stay safe and we'll see you soon bye <laughs>